It's interesting. Australia was originally settled by, by uh, Aborigines some 50,000 years ago, and they reached Alice Springs about 30,000 years ago. And Alice Springs is a spring, hence the name, in almost the very centre of Australia. So Aborigines have been there for a long time. If you know the country, it's actually quite rich in food. So it's, if it, for a desert environment, there's enough water for some of the year to, uh, to, to, to provide enough nu nutriment for, for, for Aborigines to settle. So that's why they were there. It's also a spectacular landscape. You've got Alice Springs itself, the spring, but within a, a, you know, a couple of days' walk of there, you've got Uluru, Ayers Rock, this, this massive rock, 1,000 feet high, six miles around the base. Uh, you can see it for a long distance away. Changes colour all day from red through all the different reds to purple. Quite a, uh, an eerie, uncanny place. So anyone who sees that wants to stay there. Uh, so they're, they're there. There are rivers that run from time to time. Further out uh, is Catajuta, uh, the Olkas, which are another extraordinary place. They look like large marbles, I suppose, set in the, out in the middle of the desert. Some of the stories are that they're, they're the eggs of the rainbow serpent. Well, it's now a great tourist centre. Uh, the Aborigines took over Uluru to run it in uh, 1985, and it's now a very uh, well-established place uh, to go. From the 1950s and 60s, people were climbing the rock. Uh, the Aborigines don't like you climbing the rock now. They, they say it's, it's, it's not good for the rock, and it's, it's, you know, people don't understand its significance. But they haven't stopped people from doing it. So you can still do that. It's, uh, they call it heart attack rock. It's, uh, it's quite steep. There's a chain that you can hold on the way up. Some 30-odd people have fallen off it uh, in, in, the, in the history of the climb, so it's, it's a little bit dangerous. The, the rainbow serpent's a quite interesting story. I mean, ma many Aboriginal groups have, uh, have the rainbow serpent as their, their, their sort of founding mother. It looks as though the archaeologists are saying that the, there's a lot of flooding of Australia after the melting of the ice, after the second ice age, is about 10,000 years ago. And in that, there was a scarcity of resources and a lot of fighting, inter-tribal inter inter fighting. Associated with that were, they're actually seahorses, but the head of the seahorse, drawn on, in a rock painting, uh, looks like a dragon. And if you elongate it, it looks like a snake. And what happened was that over time, this traumatic period was remembered by massive seahorses which were actually snakes which were something other else <laughs> and that, that got into the mythology and explained the landscape we didn't know this until until recently when somebody looked at the resemblance between some of the seahorse paintings in, in the northern territory and this and the rainbow serpent as, as it evolves as you go south So it is, it is a, a, a place that, uh, that, you know, that, that, that people respond to being in. It's called the Red Heart, because you've got this very, very red soil. Uh, and it's, it's just, if you go there, you know, you're pleased to be there. Every Aboriginal group has its own, uh, what, what they call dreaming, or translated into English as dreaming. And the dreaming is how you came to be. And how you came to be, you know, in the Aboriginal sense, is intimately connected with the soil that you're on, or the, or the territory that you're on. So for the local Aborigines there, Uluru is, is, is the centre of their existence. Uh, it, it, it tells them that the, the stories associated with it are all birthing stories, life stories, to do with, with their totems and their, their, their being. Uh, so different times of the year, the different totems will, will fish or they will, they'll hunt or they'll do this, that or the other. And those stories are associated with the area. You can't leave. If you're an Aborigine, your whole philosophy is bound up with that. And Uluru is, 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 is a, a sort of magnet. Um, it doesn't have national significance like that. 
uh, although it does now uh, for everybody because it's the essence of Australianness. It's the very centre of Australia and it's, and it's red and it's big and it's nowhere else. <laughs> so it's, it's the Aboriginal um, mystique that's around it has now become a national mystique.